I mean, just watching next level fishing videos, I mean, it's like, you know exactly what you're doing. Like, from from an outsider's perspective, I'm like, oh, this guy, I, I would never think of you as an entertainer, and, and not to, not to, I'm not, I'm not putting that in a bad way, I just think this is a guy who knows what he's doing. I'm, I'm, I'm lying wide awake, I can sleep tonight, staring at the ceiling like a restless child. Cause you're running around telling all these lies You're telling all these lies, boy You said you need a space, but you're out right now Drinking with your friends, having a good time But when you're feeling lonely, you come back around You come back around This year's been pretty different, right? Every year has different challenges. I think, if anything I can say about my experience in trout fishing, every year I, I kind of I have used to I used to say, man, it's getting colder quicker. It's getting colder later. It's bouncing all over the place, right? Weather's changing. I, I just think that every year brings a different picture now. And uh, who knows, next year we could just have more sustained cold weather and, and the following, it could be vice versa. I think you just got to kind of take everything as it comes. And uh, I would say this year, we've had our good, good 50 degree fronts. But they just haven't stayed, right? So we're fishing a lot of these uh, winter snaps, and there's been some great trout fishing. Don't get me wrong, man. We've had some great trout fishing, but um, today uh, is going to be interesting. With those rains, it's because we have a pre-front, so I, I got to get off the water way before, and I got to sort of watch this front as it's coming in. Uh, it's going to bring 30 mile an hour winds, which is okay. Like it's all doable. I can do that on the autopilot. I'm not, not too concerned about it, but it, it does have and brings more risk involved. So I, I kind of want to stay away from that. Uh, we'll be watching the weather as we fish. So uh, hang tight, guys. We're going to get loaded up and uh, we'll see if we can get on some fish today. No matter how many times I fish backwaters, which I'm extremely familiar with, seems like I learn something new all the time. I'm that angler that I'm always trying to figure out why, you know. Um, probably not the best tactic to have, especially when you're trout fishing. I mean, if, if the fish are there and you know they're always there, some guys would just be like, well, let's go to this spot, right? And um, I'm more of a, well, why are they here, you know, why, why, why are these fish always here? Is there something else to it or is there just some magical magnetic field that draws these fish here, you know? I'm, I'm always sort of thinking and, and today's exciting because I kind of uh, solved a, a piece to a puzzle on a particular shoreline that just drove me nuts, you know, I never really understood why it produced so well, but, but it does. and. I can sort of now see where these patterns are, are building from. I feel like I just found structure. I did. I did. There's some structure out here that's been here for, and I've been fishing this area I don't know how long, and I have never picked up on it. All right, so trout are notorious for bouncing off throughout the day when there's appropriate structure. <laughs> yes. 
and um, they'll do this, you know, especially during the winter. I like to hit up those uh, shelly areas, um, and they'll run deep to shallow. Just depending, a lot of it depends on wherever, you know, th there's different scenarios as far as how they play out, water temperature, what the water temperature does to bait, um, whatever the case may be, they just, they move a lot throughout the day. And, and that's one of the reasons why trout are uh, just special, they're different. A lot of people compare them to bass, and you know, I'm not a big bass angler, but uh, I have heard and from bass anglers that bass and fishing in general is just, there's so much to it, there's so much movement, um, so many variables, and trout are kind of similar in that sense. Stick around, when we return I find an unexpected guest and one issue that always plagues a trout fisherman. If you see this species hanging around, there's a good chance your day may be disturbed. All right guys, we're gonna get right back to the action here. We're just gonna take a little break and I'm gonna play a little game with you guys, all right? So, chance at winning some gear. You're gonna find out on the next episode who wins. But here's the question, all right? In the state of Texas, if you have a motorized kayak, this is called a navigation light. It's got red and green. Must this be equipped to make you a legal vessel in the state of Texas? Send your response to nextlevelfishingtv at gmail.com. I'm gonna throw you guys in a drawing and on the next episode, you're gonna find out if you win a prize pack from Next Level Fishing TV. show you guys something. As soon as I brought this trout on the net, look how quickly this happened. <laughs> Pretty quick, huh? Real important to keep that tension going uh, on trout and just try your best, man, not to, not to let up on it. It's our first trap of the day here. It's a pretty good one. It's about a three pounder, you know, it's not bad. Beautiful, beautiful trout. Beautiful, man. Not a bad start. Um, damage on it, this is already kind of hit, but you know, the one thing's about forky is that they do warp on you. So it's important to kind of straighten those out as best you can. We call it, uh, getting tacoed sometimes it gets it lodges in their mouth sideways and they'll actually bend the whole thing in so it's just something to kind of be weary of one thing i absolutely love about the autopilot is just the way that the motor the kayak sort of just all interacts and just how nimble it can be in and around structure i'm, I'm moving real tight in between some of these wooden columns while I'm doing all that, I see a little bit of water disturbance sort of off to the side. Bam. And immediately, uh, you know, the bite that I'm looking for just, boom, gets me.
Lots of red. Lots of red. I don't want a red. Dang red. Thought I had a nice trout and ended up being a good, decent little red. <laughs> you get in that trout mindset, man, that's what happens. Three things are guaranteed on the Texas coast. Death, taxes, and high winds. Winds have picked up, and I'm not gonna lie, I kinda like it. Thanks to my side scan, I'm noticing some really good well-defined shadows, symbolizing fish. We'll see if we can nab one before things get a little too crazy. This trout really had me fooled. It's actually fought a lot harder than some of the 25 plus inch range trout that I've had to deal with. Oh man, I wish I could show you guys what I saw on my screen, but it's a little difficult. Really beautiful speckled trout here. I am fishing, working some structure, and um, I was marking them on side scan. I could, every now and then I would see their cattle, uh, shadows cast and um, barely on. Um, that is what it is though. Beautiful, beautiful trout. We're gonna release her, let her get bigger. We got a few good, decent trout and uh, got, a, got a nice red. Released everything, but uh, I'll show you guys what, what all we used here. So this corky's still kicking. Early morning we started off with this, got a good hit. Um, the bite was a little weird to say the least and then I found some reds pushing through so that kind of never really helps whenever you're, you're trout fishing. One thing that I, I kind of realized or one thing that I've learned is you know typically when there's a lot of reds they'll either push out the trout or the trout will just just relocate, you know. Um, I don't know, for whatever reason, they just don't seem to want to mix a lot. Um, and that's kind of what happened in the first area. The first area, was gonna have, we were gonna get a shot at a good one. And I think they were there, but there's a lot going on. We've got the front coming. We had a full moon uh, yesterday, last night rather. So, uh, you know, feeding patterns might be a little off, delayed. Um, Corky did good today, and if you're wondering what the uh, other soft plastic was, it's AM Fishing, garlic scent, this is the exact color. They, this particular one glows uh, green and orange, but we really didn't need it today. Uh, even though I did fish at night, but it's kind of not worth uh, rolling cameras at night, so. Anyway, it's gnarly. I better uh, wrap it up. And we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share with all your friends. Uh, definitely visit our website, nextlevelfishingtv.com, and sign up on the newsletter. Beginning in January, we're going to be giving uh, monthly giveaways to newsletter subscribers. Uh, you can either become a subscriber or become a member of the website. Uh, I've got the roster. I've got the list of everybody's email. Make sure it's uh, all legit and it's actually a, le a legitimate email. Otherwise, you're not going to know if you want or not. So um, that's about it. We'll see y'all soon.